I mean, a lot of those guys, when you put them up to the sabermetric microscopes, you're looking at guys that would be, I don't know, slam dunks is the right word, but very, very uh, easily getting in, I would think, because of the, the way that they played the game and what we appreciate now um, in the total package. So I, I think you could go back and make a case for a lot of guys. And the case that you just made for Nettles is a great one. And um, I, I think maybe we didn't appreciate because you had uh, you know, Reggie Jackson and, and all of those guys taking the headlines away yeah. from the, you know, the nuts and bolts guys that kind of held the Yankees teams together. So when you think of like, when you go down the list, you know, uh, Matthews and Brooks and Schmidt and Boggs and Chipper Jones and Brett, um, I, it's, it's hard for me to stick rolling. And it's just, it's hard for me to do that. And, and I watched his career and I remember covering some of those Philly teams way early on when he came up and you mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, not being liked in certain cities. That was certainly the case in Philadelphia. He won and out. He couldn't stand the media. He couldn't stand mm -hmm. the fan base. The knock on him was he was not a pressure player. He, he And, you know, what happens, right? You go to St. Louis, Midwest, a little more laid back here and there. Um, so I, And a great postseason player in St. Louis. He you did. know, won a couple of World Series there. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I'm not – I think when people start to uh, say, well, one guy's I, – I always equate it to, let me take a look at the numbers. Like, my thing was, if you stick Roland in, uh, Scott Roland in, then you have to put a guy like – Greg Nettles in. I mean, I can even make a case for Ron Santo. I mean, Ron Santo to me is, is, is you know, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Steve Garvey, different position, okay. but Steve Garvey, I apologize. Steve Garvey, you know, Santo took what? How many years Santo finally yeah. gets in? For a, he took the whole the whole time, didn't he? Yeah, and he got and, in for the from the veterans committee. Yeah, so I look at you know a guy like Garvey. You know, we can go back to the Kent conversation in a minute. How about David Wright? Does do you believe David Wright, top MVP, uh, finished three times, three ninety doubles, um, two ninety six batting average, over seventeen hundred hits, eight time All Star, two hundred and forty something odd home runs, close to two hundred stolen bases. He was a rock star in New York, but he had the bad back. Is 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 that going to hurt David Wright? Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, and, and he's up uh, next year, right? Is going to be when he comes on the ballot for the first time. So we'll get we'll get a chance to to, to hash out all that in, in detail. I'll tell you one thing though that kind of encompasses this entire conversation is that the number of third basemen that are enshrined in Cooperstown is really small when you consider the percentages of players at other positions. It's Fair hard point. to get in, uh, and I think Fair you point. know you say you well, know, or, or, or critics would say you know Scott Rowland you know he he doesn't stack up to you know, Brooks Robinson and, and all of these other guys, you know, throughout the history and Mike Schmidt and all that. I mean, who does from that span of time? I mean, there aren't that many great third basemen when you go from Chipper Jones to Nolan Arenado, who's building a case, maybe not there yet, but you look at Arenado's career and you look at Scott Rowland's career, those guys are pretty, you know, pretty close in parallel. So that's kind of how I look at it is that their third base is an underrepresented position, and Scott Rowland was certainly Hall of Fame worthy at that position among his peers, and that's kind of what uh, what pushed him over the edge for me. Listen, that's a it's a fair point and it's a valid point because if you look at other positions where it's I don't I don't like to say watered down or saturated, I guess you have to. Uh, you know, in the NFL, we have the argument with wide receivers. Cluster. How about that cluster? Talent clusters. There are clusters there you go. of there talent. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me just write that down. Hundred percent. That is, you know, that's why they call it the hot corner. No one's disputing his talent and his defense. But again, I I have more of a problem with. I feel as though baseball, and I say this with respect to the voters, the, the Hall of Fame voters, is is starting to become like the NFL, where we want to push a certain narrative or agenda when it has to do with a certain play, like Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens was not a likable guy, right? We, we know that, but there's no reason he should have waited as long as he had, you know, yep. a guy like Sam, Jim Rice, you know, even Carlton, Carlton never got along with the media, Jim Rice and, and the Boston, you know, this 
they hated each other, right? I mean, right. he made it no, but yet that, Dick Allen that, still hasn't gotten in. And and he's worthy of the Hall of Fame, right? Mm-hmm. He's worthy. The, the Albert Bell conversation we have, I had this uh, discussion with my buddies this morning. I was like, look at a five to six year stretch. This mm-hmm. guy was arguably the best player in baseball. I, I put up Steve Garvey's numbers as well, because I think, I, I believe, listen, someone under 30 has no idea who the hell Scott Rowland is. They, they don't. That's another problem we have, but that's a conversation for another day. I look at Garvey and I say Garvey's credentials, where he stacks up, where he played the position at the time, and I know moving around then eventually first. Okay, fine. You can make a case, Garvey. I can go back, you know, MVP 74, NLCS, close to 300 home runs, almost 2,700 hits. Uh, you know, the, the slugging percentage, the, 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 the war, the on base, it's there. Kent, I can make the same argument for Kent. What, why is a player like Jeff Kent so dismissed when it comes to the voting? I, I think there may be some personality conflicts in there too that, that still linger. Um, I think for me, I, I like the well-rounded players and I like guys that are, that are good defensively, offensively, that run the base as well. Um, Jeff Kent obviously can hit like nobody's business and was, you know, maybe the, the greatest, certainly in, in our lifetime, the greatest hitting second baseman um, that we've ever I, seen. I agree to that. But, um, but then what was the era that he played in also, offensive numbers were up across the board. So yeah. you kind of have to take those career totals and say, you know, would Joe Morgan have hit more home runs than Jeff Kent in the same era, you know, that sort of things, you can make those debates. Um, but that's where, you know, you, you look at the OPS plus, you know, things like that, that, um, that kind of incorporate that into things. You look at, you know, wins above replacement incorporates base running and defensive metrics and things like that in there. So, you know, to me, Jeff Kent was certainly right at that borderline and it would not have bothered me at all if he made a you know a final year push and got in i would i would tip my cap to him um but i just i didn't vote for him when the ballot i think it was another thing with jeff kent too if i can throw this in yeah please he was on there when the ballot was really crowded with bonds and clemens and all those guys were Numbers taking game. i get spot. it you take away votes i i get that and i had trouble you know figuring out which 10 i was going to vote for you know, the, the first two times I was, you know, filling out my ballot. He's got the most home runs for a second baseman. Ever. Yeah. Yep. I think he's got 376, 377. Um, you mentioned the war, the wins above replacement. How much stock do you put into that? Because I feel over the last 15 to 20 years, now everyone, that's the sexy term to use. When before it was just watch the film, the right. eye test, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that's, that's what we had, you know, we had, we had your, uh, your slash line totals, you know, your, your runs and RBIs right. and, and batting average and all that. Um, I, I do because I, I, I think that it does give a nice way to compare players across eras mm-hmm. and because it adjusts for, you know, the offensive environment at the time, it adds in a defensive component. And I, and I have to say too, little caveat measuring defense is not a precise thing like figuring out a guy's ops um i mean there is a lot of subjectivity in that and for those reasons most of the time it kind of jibes with what i what i see and what i've seen with my eyes you know it, it ranks andrew jones as one of the best defensive players of all time and to me that checks out. Yeah, um, yeah it, we had that it, it conversation. Detracts. Yep. It, it detracts from some people, um, and Jeff Kent being one of them, who I feel like, yeah, uh, you know, there are plays that he should have made. Um, he did not have the range that other second basemen did, that sort of thing. So I do give those war credence. Um, but yeah, there's all, there are two different versions of war, too. So you can manipulate that if you want to whichever fits your argument, fits your narrative. So a lot of times I think sports writers have their points of view and they cherry pick the stats that make that look more legitimate 